Hi, and welcome to Comedy Recapped. Today we will be talking about the 1998 Australian comedy titled Young Einstein. This film is a fantasized account of Albert Einstein, altering all of the circumstances of his life, including relocating him to Australia. Beware, spoilers ahead. Enjoy! We meet a young Albert Einstein dreaming under an apple tree at his family's farm in Tasmania. He's suddenly awoken by an apple that jolts him. At this moment, he comes up with his first scientific theory. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. His father, looking for Albert, stumbles upon a tree in the orchard, where a Tasmanian devil is eating apples that Albert is tossing off the top. He shoots toward the devil, which sends Albert off the tree and down onto a crate full of apples. He later explains to his father that he wanted to be a physicist, not a farmer, which his father quickly dismisses by asking, what do physicists grow? The next day, his father takes him out to a shed, where he's been trying to create his own beer. Unfortunately, this beer doesn't have any bubbles in it, and no one has figured out how to put bubbles in beer yet. After the two drink heavily, Einstein thinks of the theory of mass energy equivalence, or E equals mc squared, as a formula to split beer atoms and create bubbles in beer. After spending all night preparing, Albert splits a beer atom with a hammer and chisel, which causes the shed to explode. He shows his parents the formula and a fine-looking glass of beer. Inspired by this new incredible glass of beer with bubbles, his father encourages him to head to the Australian mainland to patent it. On his journey, Albert meets Marie Curie, a Polish-French scientist studying at the University of Sydney. She's in a car with Preston Preston, the pompous manager of the Sydney Patent Office. He attempts to woo her when Albert walks into the cabin, covered in dirt, while Marie and Albert immediately hit it off, as she's fascinated by him, Preston is annoyed and scared, especially when Albert pulls a lizard out of his pocket. When he's finally made it to Sydney, he makes his way to buy a room before learning that the patent office will not accept scientific theories. He makes himself at home, trying the patent office again, only to be turned away. While in his room at the brothel, Einstein watches some children playing hopscotch down in the alley, inspiring another concept. Later that night, after some tinkering, he creates the first amplifier and electric instrument. While in the bath, he plays his electrical violin, and the power alone sends him off. When he brings his instrument into the patent office, he tries to patent the new invention, and is promptly kicked out. Dejected, Einstein makes his way to the university to find Marie Curie. No instruments are allowed, so he leaves his creation at the front desk. He visits her class and upsets her professor by erasing his work and writing his own theory. Though he's quickly thrown out for his behavior, she becomes more fascinated with him. Preston later attempts to woo Marie with his fancy upper-class lifestyle, to no avail. During a performance at a club together, she mentions her continued interest in Einstein's theory, to which Preston is not all that impressed. Jealous that she's paying him more attention, Preston has his clerk call Einstein into the office to take the formula for safekeeping. Preston then turns the formula over to the Bavarian brothers, a pair of brewmasters who plan on using it to get rich. As Einstein invents rock and roll with his electric violin, he begins his romance with Marie. They go dancing and out on a seaside date, where Marie is swept up in all his thoughts. As they leave, Marie expresses that she wishes the moment could last forever, which inspires his theory of relativity on the spot and amazes Marie in the meantime. Marie writes to Preston to get Einstein a position in his office as a bookkeeper, as she believes he can be of help. Preston hires him, but the two don't work well together. Preston is left yelling at him. He complains to Marie that Einstein, while brilliant, is uncultured and rough. Marie, however, is clearly smitten with him, no matter what Preston tries, which only further enrages him. Einstein writes back home, saying he's found an excellent job, a good place to live, and met a girl. He says he may have discovered the key to the universe, but his mother is happier that he's found a girl. Marie and Einstein go on a date to the beach, where he shows off the concept of surfing to her, while using a board he'd carved out in the woods. Marie and Albert begin to get closer, which further enrages Preston. He calls Einstein into the office, only to tell him he's doing him a favor by firing him from the bookkeeping job at the patent office. He says he'd only kept him around so long because of Marie's words, but tells him that he has no ability, no talent, and potential. For this, he cites it a favor to let him go. The next day, a dejected Albert is surrounded by the local kids, he dances with them, playing music until the front desk clerk informs him that Preston has created a keg using his stolen theory. Albert runs to the Bavarian Beer Company to confront the brothers about the keg. 
The door won't open for him, but he eventually runs in and tries to warn them that the machine is dangerous and can't be built. Suddenly, officials dressed in white catch him and commit Albert to a lunatic asylum. In the asylum, Einstein gets along great with the other mad scientists committed as well. The staff treats him harshly, including a burly nurse who brings him down before he's subjected to electroshock therapy for his lunacy. Having dinner together, the other scientists say his theory is good, but the light needs to have a constant speed to work. He reveals to them that the speed of light is constant, and that Isaac Newton was wrong. Marie confronts Preston, saying Einstein would have done nothing wrong with the work and only tried to help people. After learning of Preston's plans, and knowing that his creation of the largest beer keg would essentially be an atomic bomb, Marie tries to save Einstein. At first, she's sent away, but she returns disguised as Albert's father. She finds him in the men's showers, and the two share a tender moment before the men in the washroom realize she's a woman and all try to get away. Meanwhile, a mad cook is collecting kittens to bake into a pie in the kitchen. When they discuss Preston's plans, Einstein claims he doesn't know what to do. Marie gets upset and leaves in a huff after telling him she wants a man who will do something. Finally, he hatches an idea for escape, using his electrical rock and roll theory. He rebuilds his electric violin into an electric guitar, and then hooks it up to the institution's main lines. This shorts out all of the circuits and opens the doors. After avoiding the burly nurse and saving the kittens from the mad cook's pie, Albert escapes with the other inmates. When he learns that Marie has returned to France, Einstein sails a steamboat to France and wins her back, promising to stop Preston. The two of them use the Curie family hot air balloon to head back for the Nobel ceremony in Paris, attended by many different scientific luminaries and inventors. Charles Darwin announces Preston as the winner of that year's Nobel Prize for his beer bubble discovery. Einstein interrupts Preston's speech by asking whether Preston knows what will happen when an atom is split. Darwin immediately realizes that Preston has unknowingly built a dangerous atomic bomb and orders him to stop. Preston then scoffs at the warning and starts the keg. It immediately malfunctions, shaking and building up pressure. Einstein acts quickly, attaching his guitar to the keg to help drain it, despite Marie's warning that it will kill him. Einstein plays his electrified guitar riff anyways, which drains the keg of all of its power. Preston then tries to kill Einstein, but Marie knocks him unconscious. Einstein radiates pure energy, causing massive feedback before the inevitable explosion. Einstein is revealed when the smoke clears, covered in the debris but otherwise unharmed. Marie runs up to him as the crowd cheers them on, surprised and excited that it worked. The two of them kiss in front of an excited crowd. Einstein returns to Tasmania with the keg and his new Nobel Prize. He takes the time to tell his family that he plans to give his formula to the world rather than keep it for personal gain, after the government asks him to use it as well. Marie questions what would happen if this was applied to create atomic weapons. Naively, Einstein expresses his trust in the governments of the world. A crowd cheers for him to make a speech, and he announces when he's in front of them that he's learned a new theory. He then plays a rock and roll song for an adoring crowd, who scream in excitement for the music and his fantastic dance moves. And that's going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this recap as much as we did. If you liked the video and want to look into other movies with us, then be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. That way you won't miss a single video.